Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're gonna jump to another topic from the last video and that is how to improve your images as this was the second most voted thing on that poll. So I'm gonna divide this video into three parts. One is for uh, subject shots, uh, the second one is for architectural shots and the third one is just a couple of mistakes and how to improve it. So without further ado, let's begin the video. So the first effect that we're gonna try to recreate is this one as you can see in the reference image when you have a subject and um, the blur in the background is kind of circling around it which um, creates more focus towards the subject. So we're gonna do that by uh, using lens distortion in Unreal. So let's begin. So I, uh, I'm using this winter scene from the marketplace. I'm gonna link it in the description if you wanna check it out. And uh, I basically just created a camera. If you don't know how to do that, check out this video where I talk about that and just um, work on those uh, aperture and focal length things. So first things first, in order for us to use lens distortion, we need to enable one plugin. And uh, if you go to the edit tab, then uh, plugins and search for uh, camera calibration enable that and then restart your engine and we'll continue from there do keep in mind that we're going to use this for the second uh, part as well so very important so you're going to notice that after you restart your engine if you click on your cine camera actor instance uh, in that plus add button if you click on it and search for lens, uh, you're gonna see that a new lens component pops up and it automatically adds it to your uh, camera. Okay, so after you apply the lens to your camera, if you select it, you're gonna see that this property panel pops up and uh, here we need to adjust some settings. Now you can see that we have a lens file that we can add I usually use those anamorphic lens files that uh, I showed you in this video right here. If you want to check it out, those are really great. But uh, for this video, we're going to do manual tricks to this. So we're not going to use any lens file, but just so you know. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to change the evaluation mode from use live link to use camera settings so that it will... Uh, gather all the information from our camera component like uh, focal length and aperture and things like that and um, we're gonna adjust the distortion based on that now da down here in the distortion source we don't use a lens file if you do you leave this on if we're gonna go manual just change it to manual and a few parameters will pop up after you check the apply distortion and um, you check the lens model to whatever camera you're going for. In this case, we're gonna use spherical, not anamorphic. And you can see that these parameters just popped up and these are the ones that we're gonna slightly change. Okay, so basically we're just gonna work with the first two of them, but you can always check all of them out to see what they do. I mean, you can uh, stretch the image, rotate it on vertical and horizontal. We're gonna use that uh, bit later in the video but if you want to create this spherical kind of um, bokeh effect we're basically gonna work with the two of them only so the first one you, you see that it stretches if you go into the plus values it's gonna stretch it outside and if you go to the minus it's gonna squeeze it like if you know what i mean you can basically tell by the image and you can see that the effect is kind of pronounced and a way to counteract with that is by uh, going to the second option and bumping that up so it will uh, create a more subtle effect but still keep those bokeh effects and if you click on this apply distortion button you can see that it uh, you can preview the distortion on or off to see the difference I think that's pretty cool so I found that a value of uh, minus 0.65 and uh, a 0.65 is pretty good. You need to play around with this so to get the result that you want. But uh, I wouldn't say to go 
for lower than minus one at first and one at the second one. I mean, it depends, but the first one is a more important. So don't go below minus one, I suggest only if that's what you really want to do. Now, here's a little preview before and after the distortion. Tell me in the comments which one you think looks better. So we're continuing with this winter scene where I'm going to show you how you can achieve that vertical tilt correction because this doesn't have a default button that you can just switch on and off like other softwares do. So we're going to have to do it manually. This is what architects and designers most uh, use because it creates a more dramatic look to the image than the three point perspective one. And um, if you're trying to find a solution and you didn't until now, you've come to the right place. So there's a few ways that we can do that. One is uh, by just taking a three point perspective photo and uh, then doing it in Photoshop, like stretching it out to uh, make those edges a bit more parallel to each other. But that's not really a good idea. And uh, if you stretch the image, you basically lose pixels. So that's not not a good one. Then another one is inside of Unreal, which is based on the Cine Camera Actor. So basically, if you click on your Cine Camera Actor instance, then go into the Transform tab in the Rotation panel, you're gonna see that if you change the middle value, it will change the rotation on the vertical axis. And if you set them to zero, then it will automatically create all the uh, edges that are going up to be vertical. So this is uh, basically a two point perspective view. But what I don't like about this is that it cuts off the top and it's uh, giving us more at the foreground of the image. And basically we have to go into the film path settings as you can see and change the sensor height to be able to capture all the details that uh, we had. But this is uh, a disappointing one because after this you have to calculate your pixels, your render shot, then going into Photoshop or whatever and cropping the image and it's it's a bummer. It's just it hits you in the head and it's it's not a great solution. So instead we're gonna use the lens distortion like we did with the previous part. So let me show you how it's done. Okay, so we're going back to the lens. Then in the distortion uh, parameters, you're gonna want to set them to default. Just click on that uh, arrow on the right to set them to default values. And for this type of shot, we're only gonna use the P1 value and the first one from the FX FY. So as you can see, if we drag this slider, it will rotate the image on the vertical axis and uh, that way we'll be able to control the vertical lines. The second one is for horizontal, but we're not gonna use that. So for my shot, uh, I need to use uh, negative uh, values here so that it will uh, stretch my uh, vertices up. And you can already see that are, they are vertical, but the image is very distorted on the edges. And that's where the FX, FY uh, value comes in after you completely adjust the P1 value, you go to the FX FY and uh, pump those values up so that the edges left and right, as you can see, they, uh, they'll be taken down, uh, down to the ground and will create a natural look. After you play with those values, you can see that the image is still distorted. Now you can use the first parameter to stretch out the edges. A bit if you don't like that effect I personally like it but if you don't that's fine you can always do this and you can see that it's a pretty good result I think it's far better than the alternatives that we have for now but you'll have to let me know in the comments down below what you think so the only downside is when you move the camera around the verticals um, just switch off it's regarding to the position so if you're like continuing with the same position, they will stay like that. But if you change the rotations, let's say that you look down, 
that in order to get vertical tilt you have to set the value to the positive so uh, let me show you right now if you're looking down you set the values to the positive and there you have it vertical tilt but again when you move the camera it's broken again so you have to do this each time but i don't think that's such a big deal i mean it's pretty easy so here's a little preview of the before and after the vertical tilt correction. I think it looks pretty good. We're gonna continue with the post-production part. I don't have a license for Photoshop at the moment. And instead I'm gonna use Krita, which is a free software. I'm gonna link it in the description if you wanna check it out. It's pretty similar. So I'm just gonna drag and drop my image and start editing on that. What I'm gonna do first is uh, I'm gonna duplicate the layer and uh, add those effects uh, on that one. So I'm gonna right click, add filter mask. And from here you can find uh, all of the settings like levels. I usually use uh, curves for the for this type of thing the contrast and uh, so on but I couldn't find it so I'm just gonna work with levels do a bit of uh, color grading and um, add a bit of noise to the image if you're working in Krita make sure to uh, click OK after you've done a filter and then add another one like you see here otherwise uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna work so now I'm adjusting the colors a bit and uh, when I do these type of things I uh, it's important to know that you have to have a bit of contrast between the colors and I mean that by uh, contrasting uh, either uh, the complementary colors or the cold and warm values and for this image I'm uh, working with uh, warm and cold values so I'm making the blues a bit more blue and the yellow lights that you can see in my image a bit more orangey toned so that uh, it will create a nice effect but of course you can adjust it however you want I'm talking about uh, realism now and now I'm adding a bit of uh, noise to the image as even real life cameras uh, do happen to have a bit of noise in the image just a subtle effect I think it uh, gives a pretty good atmosphere. And usually I open the photos and uh, adjust it from the Windows editor for photos to add a bit of vignette uh, and adjust more of the colors, the warmth and uh, exposure, contrast, whatever, things like that. Just little details. So here's a preview of the before and after post-production and now we're gonna move on to the mistakes that I've seen happening. Now let's begin with this one. I've seen many ArchVis images that just have these extremely blurred backgrounds and this does not make it realistic at all. When uh, this thing happens, it sort of creates a very stylized look and it sort of imitates a real life uh, 3D model like of a building, not an actual building. So in order for you to make it realistic, try to do it like this with uh, less blur in the background as it will be more uh, accurate. Blurred backgrounds are only for uh, close-ups like this or uh, subject shots. The second one is not using bokeh at all. You can see that the image is very flat, the subject is not separated from the background and uh, your eyes just focus everywhere and uh, cannot find uh, a point of view. So. Just enable those uh, values. I suggest you use real life camera values so that you get a natural look. For the third one, I suggest you use lens distortion almost all the time. I mean, this is a photo I took of my desk with my phone. And you can see that these edges are very rounded at the top and bottom. And that's distortion. So even real life camera has that. So you need to enable that in order for the image to look realistic. The next thing is enabling motion blur whenever you have to. For example, this car scene that I made for this video, if you want to check it out, is in motion. So it will have a bit of motion blur, so it looks more realistic. So the last thing that I want to say is always add a bit of post-production to your images as it will improve it. 
I know this was a bit of a long video, but I think I covered a lot of good points. And let me know in the comments what you think and what would you like to see in the future. And I'll see you on the next one. Have a great day. Goodbye.